you ever asked yourself why you're studying taxation law? Maybe during lecture or while you're reading, the thought just crossed your mind. Maybe you thought, I'm not a certified public accountant. Why am I studying tax? There are people that don't pay their taxes. Why am I spending time learning about this? Isn't this the BIR's job? Or maybe you thought that you successfully got rid of mathematics in your entire academic career, then comes along these tax subjects in your third year of law school. Well, these are all valid thoughts. However, this just calls for a deeper understanding of why taxation is vital to our study of the law. So why should we study taxation? Here are three reasons why we need taxation law. First, taxation law is a bar exam subject. Needless to say, it's part of the bar exam syllabus. And in order for us to pass, we would have to answer bar exam questions on taxation. Next, you'll never know when you might handle a case that involves taxation once you're a lawyer. And last but not the least, we study taxation law because lawyers are subject to income tax. So much so that attempts by lawyers to evade tax liability have led to court actions and administrative sanctions. Examples of which would be the criminal complaint filed by the Bureau of Internal Revenue um, against Attorney Luzano for his willful attempt to evade tax and deliberate failure to supply correct and accurate information about his taxable income in the years 2009 and 2010. Similarly, the BIR had also filed complaints against Attorney Erwin Garcia, who has served as the legal counsel of several politicians because of his um, under-declaration of annual income in 2010, and also for Attorney Aportadera, who, on the other hand, failed to pay over $20 million in value-added taxes in the years 2008 to 2010, and for his under-declaration of income in 2008 and 2009. It is also important for us to remember that paying taxes is the duty of Filipinos. And more importantly, as lawyers, well, we would carry the responsibility of having to remit our taxes on time and honestly. Otherwise, we may be subject to disciplinary action under the Code of Professional Responsibility. Hence, it is without a doubt that the Bureau of Internal Revenue does not hesitate to file criminal complaints against erring lawyers for ha not having paid their income tax liabilities. Okay, so now we know that lawyers are taxable because the BII runs after them when they don't pay their taxes. But how does the tax liability of lawyers arise? How are lawyers taxed? Well, when you're a lawyer, you may earn income in either one of these ways. You can either earn income exclusively from the practice of your profession as a lawyer or self-employment, or you can earn income as a mixed income earner where while practicing your profession as a lawyer, you also engage in other forms of income earning, other forms of um, employment maybe. If you are a lawyer who earns income purely from self-employment or the practice of your profession, your tax liability varies depending on the amount of your income. If your income is less than or equal to 250,000 pesos, Section 24A of the National Internal Revenue Code provides that you incur no income tax liability. However, if the amount of your gross sales or receipts and your other non-operating income combined is less than or equal to the VAT threshold of 3 million pesos, you as a lawyer have the option to choose or to avail of either two ways of being taxed. You can either choose to be taxed according to the graduated tax rates under Section 24A of the National Internal Revenue Code, or you can avail of the 8% tax on gross sales or receipts and other non-operating income in the excess of 250,000 pesos instead of the graduated tax rates under Section 24A and percentage tax under the National Internal Revenue Code. 
However, if you are to avail of the 8% tax on gross sales or receipts and other non-operating income, you must signify your intention to avail of the same. And you can do this either in the first quarter percentage and or income tax return or on the initial quarter return of the taxable year after the commencement of a new business or practice of profession. If you don't elect this 8% option, the presumption is that you are availing of the graduated tax rates under Section 24 of the National Internal Revenue Code. Lastly, if you are a lawyer who solely derives income from the practice of their profession and your amount of gross sales or receipts and other operating income is greater than the VAT threshold of 3 million pesos, you have no choice but to be taxed according to the graduated tax rates under Section 24A of the National Internal Revenue Code and this tax liability shall be imposed on your net income as a lawyer. However, if you're a mixed income earner lawyer, wherein aside from the practice of profession, you also gain income, compensation income for that matter from employment or other sources aside from employment, your tax liability will be as follows. You will be taxed separately, but concurrently for your compensation income and for the income that you derive from business, trade, or profession. Specifically, for your compensation income, you will be taxed according to the graduated tax rates under Section 24A of the National Internal Revenue Code. But as for your income from business trade or profession, it will be taxed depending on the amount, just like if you were taxed solely as driving income from profession. So again, if your gross sales or receipts and non-operating income amount to less than or equal to the VAT threshold of 3 million pesos, you have the option to choose either to be taxed under the graduated tax rates under Section 24A plus percentage tax, or you can choose to be taxed according to the 8% tax income rate based on the gross sales or receipts and other non-operating income However, you can no longer deduct 250,000 pesos from it. And then if the amount of your gross sales or receipts and other non-operating income exceed the VAT threshold, you shall be subject to none other than the graduated tax rates under Section 24A of the National Internal Revenue based on your net income as well as to value-added tax, also known as VAT. In order to expedite the collection of income tax, the government adopts a withholding tax system. Under this, lawyers earning income from business, trade, or profession are imposed expanded withholding tax, which is regarded as advance payment of taxes. Amounts withheld are treated as a tax credit to be deducted from the total income tax due in order to arrive at the amount of income tax payable by the lawyer at the end of the quarter. Pursuant to Republic Act No. 10963 or the train law as amended by Revenue Regulation No. 11-2018, the professional fees of lawyers are subject to expanded withholding tax of 5% if their current year gross income does not exceed 3 million pesos. Otherwise, they would be subject to expanded withholding tax of 10%. However, this must not be confused with the expanded withholding tax that the lawyer, as a withholding agent, must remit to the government in order for ordinary and necessary expenses which he incurs in the practice of his profession, such as rentals, travel expenses, and salaries to be deductible from gross income. Here, if a lawyer does not withhold the same or if he fails to remit the tax to the government, it will result to the disallowance of deductibility of the expense or cost from which the withholding tax is a part of from its taxable income. For example, Attorney X rents a room in Z building leased by Y, and Attorney X's monthly rent is 100,000 pesos. In paying the monthly rent, Attorney X should not pay the entire 100,000 to Y. Rather, Attorney X should only pay Y the amount of 95,000 
5,000 after deducting the 5% withholding tax on his rental payment. This 5% represents the expanded withholding tax. The 5% expanded withholding tax withheld by attorney Y is considered as an advance payment of tax on the part of Y. Since it is an advance payment, Y can make use of the same as a tax credit against his tax due upon filing his income tax return. Thus, attorney X must remit 5,000 pesos. Otherwise, the rent expense that he incurred will be disallowed. Lawyers are also required to file their quarterly income tax returns, and this is regardless of the amount of gross sales or receipts, and must be done on or before the following dates. So since you have to remit it in quarterly incomes, you must do it in four quarters. So the first quarter must be filed on or before May 15, second quarter on or before August 15, third quarter on or before November 15, and then the last, which is the annual income tax return, must be on April 15th of the following year. Now, next time you find yourself asking why you're studying taxation law, just remember that when you're a lawyer, you will be subject to income tax and you will have to know how much you are supposed to pay and when you're supposed to pay your taxes.